Nelson. We've just finished the COP21 conference, which was a, a rather strange affair, considering that they didn't even have, have any discussion on the ocean until the last day when sort of an afterthought. Uh, but it's, of course, it was as predicted, uh, too little, too late. I guess we can look on the positive side of it, that uh, focused international attention on the issue, and it uh, gave credibility to the issue. But the agreement that they finally hammered out didn't actually use the word coal, fossil fuel, or, or uh, oil, and in any sense of it, it's not even in the agreement. So they, they sort of skirted around that. What I was trying to do all week is to bring the discussion around to oceans and the fact that if we can't save the oceans, we're not going to do anything about this because it is the ocean that regulates climate change. But for some odd reason, they just didn't want to discuss that. They also didn't really want to talk to the native peoples from Amazonia who are here too. So we did a joint uh, press conference with them and gave a joint presentation saying that the uh, rainforests are the green lungs, the ocean is the blue lungs. And uh, we did get quite a bit of uh, media attention, but uh, again, we weren't really participating in the, in the uh, conference at all. Now, the Japanese whaling fleet is heading down to the Southern Ocean, and the Steve Irwin is uh, going to be going down there also. Uh, there's really, since last year, they've cut the quota to 333, and they've expanded the area. That makes it very, very difficult to find them, but we're going to try, and I think that by next year, we should shut these guys down. I'm pretty, pretty hopeful that we can. Uh, the Bridge of Bardot, it's in Marseille. It'll be in the Mediterranean for a while. The Barley Mowat and the Jules Verne in Florida. Martin Sheen is in the Sea of Cortez, protecting the Bikita, soon to be joined by the Barley Mowat. And the Sam Simons in Bremen, and the Hyderabora Sandoval is in Cape Verde, working with Biosphera to protect turtles and uh, and birds. And of course, we have the Cove Guardians that are in uh, in Taiji, Japan. So right now, Sea Shepherds are operating. We have about in about 40 different countries, and uh, eight ships, soon to be nine ships, and hundreds of volunteers. So we're actually growing into a considerable uh, navy. In fact, we have more navy ships than some small countries. So. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I'm not sure really when I'll be able to return to the U.S., but sometime in 2016, we're making progress in our fight against the Costa Ricans. Uh, you know, now that everything's coming out in Costa Rica, just how corrupt this is. And it's also about, we're beginning to find out why I was, you know, targeted, because it started in 2002 when we were going to put a full-time patrol around Cocos Island. And what happened a couple of months ago was the arrest of a drug lord in Costa Rica named uh, Coco Macho, that was his nickname, but he, uh, he's been sitting on the Incopesca Fisheries Board, and the sister of the president is also very much involved in poaching, but it's more about drugs because Cocos Island is a transit point for cocaine from Colombia, so that's why they don't want any poaching there, because poaching, uh, if you're going to catch poachers, you're probably going to run into the drug traffickers, and uh, that's really what calls the shots down here in Costa Rica. So uh, the whole thing is a very complex thing, uh, but I'm, we're starting to expose this more and more, getting more and more uh, support in Costa Rica, so I'm confident that we'll be able to beat that at some point. But meanwhile, what the Japanese have uh, discovered, uh, they thought that by removing me, they could uh, shut down Sea Shepherd, but they discovered that Sea Shepherd is not me, it's everybody who's involved, and therefore the ships go on, the captains and the crews go on, and uh, becoming more and more effective every year. So, organization. So all is well in that respect. And uh, we're recovering from the uh, damage caused to us by the Japanese uh, in the U.S. courts, and hopefully we'll reverse that whole thing. But those are just the uh, blows that you have to take in this ongoing fight. We are, after all, up against one of the most powerful political and economic countries in the world, in Japan, and they, they hate us. But they hate us for good reason, because we have severely crippled their whaling operations. And uh, we will not stop until we shut down not only the illegal whaling operations in the Southern Ocean, but also that uh, horrific uh, dolphin slaughter in Taiji, Japan. We just have to keep it at it, no matter how long it takes until we shut it down. So, and there we are. <laughs>
Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Are there any questions about the climate change conference here at all? Yeah. Yes. How is it? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody in New York besides me? Yes, for a question, please. I'm always the one going to these places being the first one. Uh, what are you coming to New York, Paul? Well, whenever I can get go to the U.S., which I, right now I don't know why. I don't know when that'll be. Well, we love you anyway. We don't like Japan. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the question is, what do you need from New York? Oh, I don't Besides need money. anything. I don't need anything. Sea Shepherd needs all the support it can get, but uh, I, I see you're working on that, so that's good. Paul, my name is Joan. I'm from Queens Village, New York. We have whales in Queens, New York. I go whale watching across from where you guys had a cleanup at Fort Tilden. So just to let everybody know to check out Gotham Whale. We have whales in New York, and they say we have clean water, so the, the, the sooner we clean our water, the more whales and dolphins and seals and sea turtles I saw will come to New York City shores. Well, good. I hope we can read. It'll return to the days of, uh, you know, of hundreds of years ago. Not many people are aware that there used to be beluga whales in Long Island Sound. Uh, as Oh, probably about 200 years ago, it was the last ones that were in Long Island Sound. So one day, hopefully, the beluga whales will return there. Well, this is a rare opportunity to have Captain Watson Skyping in. You guys have to have more questions. Well, you don't have to have more questions. We know there was going to be a test, you know. There's always tests. Do you have a critique of the United States government involvement in COP21? Well, the U.S. government was involved. <laughs> uh, but here's the problem, is that all the rich countries, well, all the poor countries want to be rich, and all the rich countries want to be richer. And so the poor, well, there's a lot of negotiation going back and forth. It's like, oh, yeah, well, we'll do something about climate change, but what are we going to get for it? Who's going to pay us for this? Or who's going to, you know, what, what are the benefits? Everybody has really got 195 countries, and they're all concerned about how the negotiations were going to benefit each one of them. Actually, I'm quite proud of the fact that Canada completely reversed its position from climate change denying Stephen Harper to uh, a rather progressive uh, Justin Trudeau. So Canada actually sent 263 delegates to the, the COP21 and uh, you know did their best they could to uh, undo all the damage that Stephen Harper has done over the last nine years. So that, that was a good thing. Was there at least some uh, mention of the animal agriculture, like in a... No. no. <laughs> I put together a little booklet called uh, Solutions to Climate Change that nobody really wants to hear, and that included uh, converting the world to a plant-based diet, uh, because... You know, it's just a law of ecology. You, you, you can't have 7.5 billion meat-eating primates. Predators should never outnumber their prey. And uh, and you shouldn't actually expand artificially uh, those species which are really destructive to the planet, like cows, for example. So, uh, you know, greenhouse gases, more greenhouse gases are, are, are produced by the animal in, in agriculture industry than by all the transportation industries combined. But that wasn't discussed. Nobody really wanted to get into that. But the most um, disappointing thing was that they really didn't want to even consider the ocean as anything that was worthwhile. We did put a life-size, we were partners with a, a, a French group called uh, the, uh, the Blue Whale, and uh, we did put a life-size blue whale on the bank of the Seine, and uh, it's there still. It'll, that was a little difficult. They've been working on it for two years to put it there, and about a week before, uh, the, it was all uh, the, the government passed all these laws stopping all kinds of protests and apparently a blue whale was considered to be a protest 
So we actually had to go in and uh, have meetings with the president, with Halong, to get permission to put that blue whale up there. And uh, they allowed us to do that, but people were supposed to be able to go inside and see films, but they wouldn't let anybody inside. I guess they thought they close to the Eiffel Tower was going to be an atomic bomb or something. I have no idea what's going through their heads. But anyway, the reason that the, uh, the blue whale was there was to illustrate that... Uh, the reason that since 1950 we've lost 50, 40%, 40% of our phytoplankton population in the ocean, and that provides over 50% of the oxygen in the uh, in the atmosphere. And why is that being diminished? It's because we've destroyed 90% of the whales, and the whales provide the nutrient base for the phytoplankton, nitrogen and iron. And their you know one blue whale dumps three tons of uh, feces into the ocean every day, and that uh, provides a considerable amount of nutrients. So when you remove the whales, you remove the nutrient base from the phytoplankton, causing oxygen depletion, and it also weakens and diminishes the number of zooplankton, and they play a large part in sequestering CO2. These are all very important things, but you wouldn't really notice it at the uh, at the conference because not once was that actually even brought up. Is what about the whale wards coming to? Is whale wards going to be coming back on Animal Planet any time in the future? Well, yeah, they're going to, uh, their Discovery's actually got a film crew who will cover in a, uh, the Vaquita campaign in the Sea of Cortez. Uh, the, of course, you can't have whale wars without a whale, you know, without them down there. So uh, we will, of course, be documenting what's happening this year. And, um, you know, really, gotta, we have to remember whale wars is something that, that we really wanted to get off the air by ending whaling. So... Our objective is to end whaling and therefore end the show. <laughs> but uh, we're working with Robert Redford's group on uh, in Discovery now to do things with him. But there, if there is more confrontations, there will be more whale war shows. Given the success of Ice Fish last year, can you talk about some of the goals of the campaign this year? Well, yes. Uh, the, you know, the Steve Irwin will be going down uh, looking for illegal whaling, but also looking for, you know, toothfish poachers. We're quite confident that we'll find them. And uh, that's probably an incredibly successful campaign. Uh, I just did um, a Q&A, actually, uh, three days ago with Ian Urbana, who, was, who wrote the articles for the New York Times. And um, he, he said that uh, what Sea Shepherd is contributing a great deal to, uh, you know, to exposing is illegal activity. And uh, we intend to do a lot more. Uh, you know, governments really should be doing this, but uh, about a month ago, I sat on a panel at the Senate in France. It's rather strange because I was on the same table as the highest ranking admiral in the French Navy and the highest ranking general. And uh, they were actually very supportive. <laughs> And I said to them, uh, you know, well, we've got to do something about illegal fishing. France has the second largest um, coastline in the world after the United States when you consider all the Pacific Islands and everything. And uh, they agreed. They said the problem is their hands are tied to the thing, but they have the resources and they could shut down illegal fishing in the Indian Ocean and in the Pacific if they were allowed to do so. They would very much like to do so. So, uh, you know, the corporations have an incredible power over all of the governments of the world, and uh, we have all the laws we need, the treaties we need to protect the oceans. We just seem to lack uh, political and economic uh, motivation in order to do anything about it. Any more questions? Rare opportunity. Is there any way to combine additional organizations to Sea Shepherd in order to bolster the, the ability for Sea Shepherd to make an impact? Uh, you know, there are other environmental organizations out there, though I understand that they're not as committed to um, certain aspects of, of, of uh, you know, moving the agenda forward. I mean, is there any way that we can get them involved that you think of? I don't so. You know, Sea Shepherd, we're sort of like the ladies of the night of the uh, conservation movement. You know, people agree with them, but they don't want to be seen with us in the daytime. Or, you, know, really. uh, you know, for instance, uh, it was rather strange. You know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't invited to attend any of the discussions at the uh, at COP21, 
because not because of the government, but because of objections by a lot of NGOs who are supposedly on the same side. But I managed to get in on a couple of them, and they quickly realized, I guess, uh, uh, why I wasn't invited, because uh, I wasn't saying the things that they wanted to say. Um, it was a rather bizarre thing, especially at the Solutions Forum of CAP21. Of Cap uh, you know, the fishing industry was actually the main sponsor for uh, that particular forum on the oceans. And, uh, we, and as we're sitting, you know, as everybody's sitting there and they're having all these discussions by representatives of the fishing industry, one of whom referred to uh, fish as material and his concern was that the uh, climate change was causing a movement of the material, which would result in, you know, increased technological uh, innovations needed to uh, track them in order to catch more. And this is the kind of stuff they were talking about. Meanwhile, well, the food concessions at the Ocean Forum was fish and chips, and you know, nobody really. It was a, such a disconnect that it was it just really realized that you know humans are sometimes. You, a lost cause when it comes to understanding fully what exactly is going on there. But, uh, you know, it, it was interesting. <laughs> so, um, again, I, I really want to express how much of an honor it is to have Captain Watson here with us. It's the middle of the night for him, so he's had a very busy uh, week with the, the conference in Paris. So, if there aren't any more questions, um, I just want to thank Paul again, and thank you guys all for coming out, um, and give Paul a big round of applause. And thank you, Paul. Thank you. My point of view of living in France for the last 17 years. Uh, uh, <laughs> You really got to do something about Donald Trump. Everybody over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the United States is going, becoming insane. <laughs> it's rather, they just shake their heads and say, you know, what the hell is going on over there? But, uh, I said, but I, I, I keep reassuring them. I, I, I said, it's probably maybe a good thing that, that Donald Trump uh, gets the Republican nomination because then any Democrat can beat him. I mean, you know, I have faith that the majority of Americans aren't that ridiculously insane. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But it is amusing to hear about it over here. I mean, the, the impressions that everybody in Europe has about it. Maybe you should get engaged to Marine Le Pen. <laughs> you could get engaged well, you know, in my that's, that's, uh, that's another thing that's happening here, too, is, you know, the, the environmental, the diminishing environmental conditions are causing problems which are leading to refugees coming into Europe and everything. And, of course, the result of that is that it's pushing everything towards the right wing and authoritarianism because everybody's scared and wants to develop it. But, uh, as, but, but saying that, I have to say, the European right wing, as detestable as they are, they just don't come off like a bunch of Looney Tunes. Like, you know, <laughs> right. I, mean, I think that I think over here they tend to like think before they speak, and uh, we're certainly not seeing that over there. Well, that's more so, dangerous, though. <laughs> possibly. All right. Well, thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Paul. We love you.